to, well, the flag hadn't kept us from getting Nissan or, you know, a car or SDI or Yokohama or Continental Tire or Toyota. And there are a lot of deals that we didn't get because of the flag. There are a lot of deals that we didn't even look at it because of the flag. Lead CEO Joe Max Higgins believes a new state flag will now open up new economic development opportunities for Mississippi. More reaction to the flag change just ahead. WCBI News at 6 starts now. Good evening, everyone. Economic developers say a new inclusive state flag could bring more business opportunities for cities throughout the uh, entire state. They say the Confederate emblem has prevented companies from investing in Mississippi. WCBI Stephanie Poole speaks with city officials on what this will mean for the town revenue in Sartville. She joins us live with more. Stephanie. That's right, Joey. They tell me it's all about welcoming all citizens and developing methods of income. I sat down with Starkville and Newport city leaders about the recent developments. Even if it's the right thing to do, which it is, uh, it is economically the absolutely the right thing to do. Starkville Mayor Lynn Spruill says changing the state flag will have a positive impact on the city's economy. I am very grateful because uh, the things that were going to impact Starkville in particular in all of your college towns were obviously tournaments and athletics and what the message that sends to future athletes who want to come to our community who make such a difference in how we are perceived and in what we can do to better our community. Mayor Spruill is hopeful a new design will give all residents a sense of inclusion. From that perspective, I will be glad to have a flag of Mississippi that we can be proud of and that does include everyone. And, and that's what this is about. It's a uni it should be a unifying symbol. It's been five years since the city of Starkville voted to stop flying the flag. Octobaha County followed six months later. CEO of the Greater Starkville Development Partnership, Mike Taggart, says nearly 60% of sales increased during MSU's game day weekends. He says with the new flag design, he's anticipating for those numbers to grow. Uh, from our restaurants and our retail organizations, you know, they, uh, we depend on those events uh, as, as well as others, but we depend on those certainly and it has an economic impact. But in economic development and job creation, you know, this, it's no longer a state specific uh, uh, effort. You know, it's a national and international effort in trying to recruit uh, companies to your community. Eupora is one town flying the now retired state flag. Mayor Lamar Dumas says he and board members are making plans to bring it down. We will be addressing this issue and I'm sure that we during the pandemic, we've been trying to be abide by abiding by the rules of the state of Mississippi. We definitely work, welcome tourism because we to survive, you got to be economically sound and solid. With the changing of the flag, we, which is long since overdue, you know, it's certainly a, a, it's going to have a positive impact on not just Starville and, and the university, of course, but the entire state. Mayor Dumas says the board will decide on what day to remove the flag in their board meeting on July 6th. For now, reporting live in Starkville, Stephanie Poole, WCBI News. All right, everybody, we have a warm and steamy afternoon across our region. You can see our time lapse from downtown Tupelo looking off to the east this afternoon. Some of those clouds bubbling down up. We have seen some showers and storms around the region so much in our area. Not really a lot going on this afternoon. A little bit of rain, but most of it to our east and to our west. But we could still see a little bit on an isolated basis this evening. Look at these temperatures, mid 80s to around 90. The heat index still reported around 100 in Columbus and Tupelo right now. It's a warm and steamy evening here and it looks like our temperatures will be slow to fall and we will only buy them out in the mid 70s to low 70s tonight. So keep the air conditioner humming. Your full forecast in just a few minutes. I'm here outside the Lowndes County Courthouse where tomorrow the Lowndes County Board of Supervisors will meet for the first time since Harry Sanders made some racial comments. And now Lowndes County Supervisors, those meetings, they don't usually draw a large crowd, but that may not be the case tomorrow. Actually, uh, roadblocks were already set up here in the parking lot where the Sheriff's Office is getting ready to uh, kind of manage a crowd. Economic development groups and business leaders in Lowndes County are publicly, publicly urging Supervisor Harry Sanders to resign. 
nearly 150 people representing dozens of companies, industries, and small businesses, including WCBI General Manager Derek Rogers, signed a statement printed in the Sunday's commercial dispatch saying Sanders must step down following those racially biased statements that he made to a dispatch reporter earlier this month. Sanders made the comments after he voted against removing a Confederate monument statue that stands right here beside me here at the Lowndes County Courthouse. Courthouse. The statement calls Sanders' comments antiquated and abhorrent. In a statement, it, in a statement it reads, part, quote, in just a few minutes where only a few statements he recklessly injured injured rather our community's reputation and broke our trust in his leadership our community cannot wait until 2024 for his term to expire link ceo joe max higgins says those who signed the statement thought it was important to speak out together the only way for people to really understand uh, that you stand for or against something is for you to you know take your pencil out and sign sign your name and i think what we did this weekend is the business and industry community said hey this is an important issue. Uh, it's dividing our community. It's going to hurt us in economic development efforts in the future. We think it's very important to have a strong community development. Uh, uh, and if we're strong in community development and working together as a community, as a region, that it, that it, that it will automatically help us in economic development. Now, this Lowndes County Board of Supervisors meeting will take place at 9 o'clock tomorrow. Again, there will be additional measures in place if you're planning on coming to the courthouse. Uh, to read those in full, just visit our website at WCBI.com. The meeting will also be streamed on Facebook. Reporting live outside the Lowndes County Courthouse, Scott Martin, WCBI News. All right, thanks, Scott. The action this weekend by state lawmakers to retire the Mississippi state flag with the Confederate battle emblem is drawing praise and criticism across the state. WCMI's Allie Martin talks with folks in Lee County on both sides of the issue. As the former flag for Mississippi was lowered at Tupelo City Hall, a cheer went up from the crowd, followed by a song. He has Daniel Jenkins was in the crowd of onlookers. The 65-year-old Tupelo resident says he is glad to see this day finally come. This is history in the making. Jenkins believes lawmakers in Jackson took the right step by voting to retire the old flag and allowing a nine-member commission to come up with a design for a new flag. Voters will decide the fate of the new design this November. It, is, it shouldn't be a fact that we are going on being separated and being divided because of a flag, because of something that doesn't represent nothing. It's time for it to come down. He believes a new flag will promote unity across the state. It's a momentous occasion for this city, for this state, and this country. But most of all, it's just a blessing that we can all try to have some unison now and, have, and be together as one people instead of just being separated. But not everyone believes lawmakers' actions will bring about unity. People are angry. People are emotional. Lauren Smith is a Lee County resident who is concerned about the developments this past weekend at the state capitol. Smith says many people feel betrayed. The people that were in favor for the flag change, they did get a win this weekend. There is no doubt about that. And there's nothing wrong with that. However, one thing that it does sincerely concern me is how that is going to be turned. What else is going to happen? What else may come up that gets voted on without our consent? Smith is upset because she believes the state legislature bypassed all of Mississippians regardless of their stance. And she believes retiring the flag is an attempt to remove history. Our history teaches us something. Even though it's not a great history, it is not. There is, it's a travesty of things that happened to people, things that were done to the black community. There's no doubt about that it was an absolute travesty. What my concern is, is where does that stop? People we talked with on both sides of the issue admit it will be virtually impossible for all Mississippi residents to agree on a new design for a state flag or any other issue for that matter but they encourage open and honest dialogue to help the state move forward. In Tupelo, Allie Martin, WCBI News. 
Now, Governor Tate Reeves has said he will sign the bill lawmakers approved this past weekend. In other news, Lowndes County deputies are investigating a report of a shooting. The incident happened on Highway 12 just south of Sanders Mill Road. A spokesman for the Lowndes County Sheriff's Department says deputies were are investigating a shooting incident but declined to release further details. One person was taken to the hospital. The investigation continues at this hour. A Tishomingo County stabbing suspect is arrested in Arkansas. Felix Perez was arrested several hours after the incident by West Memphis, Arkansas Police. Investigators say the stabbing happened early Sunday morning on County Road 246. The victim had cuts to the torso and head. She was later treated and released from a local hospital. Deputies say the victim identified Perez as the alleged attacker. The victim and suspect were in a prior relationship. Perez is awaiting extradition and more charges are possible. The number of people hospitalized with COVID-19 shows an increase today. State health officials report 675 new cases today. 20 deaths are also being added to the state's total. This means 1,059 people died after being diagnosed with the coronavirus. MSDH says the number of people suspected to have COVID-19 in the hospital has increased along with the number of people in ICU and on ventilators. 75% of COVID cases in Mississippi do not require hospitalization. Currently in Mississippi, there are about 6,100 presumed active cases. The 18 to 29 age group has tested positive more than any other age group. Meanwhile, the state health leaders say there's less testing in Mississippi and more COVID-19 cases. Dr. Thomas Dobbs tweeted this picture over the weekend. In the chart, you can see where Mississippi tested more than 60,000 people May 17th through May 30th. The number of the positive cases in that time frame was about 6%. In June, fewer people have been tested in the two-week periods listed and the positive percentage has nearly doubled. In his tweet, Dobbs says the virus is spreading more with less testing in the state. Mississippi State University will require all employees to start wearing face masks when in any campus building starting tomorrow. The university says they're doing this due to the increase in COVID-19 cases throughout Octibaha County and the Golden Triangle. MSU will update coronavirus related information on its website and social media. Those who need a mask is asked to contact their building manager. Employees can remove their face mask if they're in their individual office or workspace where they can maintain that six feet of distance from all other people. This again starts tomorrow. Some area health workers will soon find it easier to get around while they're making the rounds. We see what's driving the change when we come back. Welcome back everyone. Nurses, social workers and other staff with NMMC's Home Health and Hospice will find it easier to get around. Carlock Nissan and Enterprise Fleet Management delivered 19 2020 Nissan Versus to NMMC this morning. The new vehicles mean that staff members of NMMC's Home Health and Hospice will not have to use personal vehicles to visit patients. 161 new cars will be on the road when the rollout is complete. It's a great opportunity for our employees. In the past, they have always been reimbursed for the expense um, of their vehicle on a monthly basis, so it's after the fact. Now all of the cost will uh, be the responsibility of Home Health and Hospice, and they do have the option uh, to use this for personal use in addition to business use. It allows us the opportunity to uh, get our name out before the people, let everybody know what we do, uh, be able to take care of each and every customer, give them the first class sales satisfaction uh, that they expect from a top notch dealership. The partnership and do, uh, the partnership and donated vehicles also means a savings of $1 million over a 10 year period for the hospital. All right, Keith, good day to be inside that car. It's oh very my goodness. sauna like summer day. You just here walk in out at 7 a.m., you just melt. You really do. Ooh, hot, humid. That would be the story all week long. Uh, this is a cool picture of the satellite image not too long ago. We have some clouds, some showers, and storms around here. It is already night in Puerto Rico after sunset. That 
Darkness is coming our way. We'll have that full forecast after the break. WCBI First Alert AccuWeather Forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. We've got the 4th of July coming up this upcoming weekend. Let's go back and look at some of these extremes for the Columbus area. The hottest 104, the coldest low 55, the wettest almost three inches of rain. The average is about the 92 degree mark, the average low about 70 here. And that's about the same story for you in Starkville and also in Tupelo too. So that's where we have been. What are we expecting this year? Let's check out the early outlook for the 4th of July as you would expect. Highs in the low 90s, a 20 to 30 percent chance for a few scattered showers and storms around here. I think we'll have higher opportunities for some rain here Tuesday, tomorrow, Wednesday, and Thursday on a scattered basis. Summer storms, lightning, gusty wind, heavy downpours, perhaps a little bit of small hail. Our time lapse for downtown Columbus today at WCBI TV. You can see some of these building clouds out there. We had a few showers earlier today. A lot of the action over the last few hours has been away from our area. There's some isolated thunder showers northwest of Greenwood. Some of that could actually slip into our area later this evening, so we can't roll out a little bit of rain here tonight. And just east of Vernon, we still have a couple of cells bubbling up here in Alabama. So a few spotty evening storms. Most of us probably will not see it. We would love to see some rain. It's going to be a warm night. Lows into the mid to low 70s. We start out at 76 on Tuesday. Low 90s in the afternoon. There's that 50% chance for some scattered showers and storms here. So much like today, the heat index could be in the low 100s across the region outside of any storm that happens to pop on up. So stay cool, stay hydrated and just protect yourself from this heat and this very oppressive humidity. Clusters of showers and storms likely in the region for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You don't really see a lot of green here, but we think there's a decent chance for some showers and storms locally. So that's why we're going to keep it in the forecast. As we get into the end of the work week, your upcoming 4th of July weekend, we'll lower the rain chances a little bit and get temperatures back a little bit warmer into the lower 90s, but it is just going to be oppressive all week long. The heat index into the triple digits at times, so stay cool. Pretty summer like for the next seven. Sports is next. WCDI Sports with Tom Ebel is brought to you by your local Ford dealers. Go further. Week two of the high school football tour kicks off with the Hamilton Lions. Head coach Wade Pierce returns for a second season, hoping the change in culture starts to lead to more wins. WCBI Sports 2020 High School Football Tour is brought to you by Itawamba Community College, Cannon Ford of Starkville, Monroe County Farm Bureau, Max South Broadband, and the Bank of Vernon. When head coach Wade Pierce arrived in Hamilton in 2019, he set out to turn the Lions football program around. As the saying goes, Rome wasn't built in a day, and neither is a state championship caliber team. In a tough 1A division, Pierce knows the key to moving his team in the right direction is adding more competitive effort. We've got to learn to compete with these guys and give our best effort game in, game out, no matter who we're playing. You know, we, we play some of the toughest teams in 1A football. And I know it's difficult. I know it's difficult to prepare for those guys, especially last year when we didn't know our personnel great. I feel like we up for the challenge. You know, uh, they have some pretty good ball teams, and I feel like we're gonna give them a run for their money this year. The biggest question right now that Pierce and his squad must answer is, how do you teach competitiveness? You can't coach effort, and you know, whenever the guys bring effort every single day, the competitiveness comes along with it. And last year, honestly, we had some guys that had to learn to give that effort. But I think we're starting to see more and more that the guys are bringing the lunch pail every single day and coming to work and realizing that, hey, if we want to get this thing going in the right direction, this is what it's going to take. We're out working every day, you know, trying to get better. And I feel like that if we keep doing what we're doing, we will be. Will be straight. In his first season, Pierce was working with a much younger team. Now that the Lions bring back a whole host of players, Hamilton looks to fill some of its missing holes with some experience. Well, we returned pretty much everybody up front on offense. We lost one guy, and he, it's going to be a big loss on the offensive line, but we have some guys that's really willing to step in and um, to fill his spot. Uh, on defense, we bring back eight of our 11 starters, so we bring back just about everybody. Um, you know, offensively, we're going to have to try to find a quarterback and a running back, and I know that's your two most important positions on offense. 
Um, but we have some guys I think are ready to step in and fill their shoes. Last year when we put all those younger guys in, I wasn't necessarily expect, expecting what I got out of them. Um, a lot of them stepped up and um, they didn't necessarily do a lot just because it was their first year, but I think this year that they'll really step up and show us what they got. Hamilton will look to bring that competitive energy when they hit the gridiron for their first matchup against Hatley on August 21st. Reporting in Hamilton on the high school football tour, Courtney Robb, WCBI Sports. WCBI Sports 2020 High School Football Tour with Hamilton High School is sponsored by Cleveland Moffett Funeral Home of Amory, Access School Health Services, and St. James United Methodist Church. The high School Football Tour continues. Plenty more stops to go from here. Taking a look at the upcoming week. Tomorrow, it's the Barnum and Rams at stop number nine. On Wednesday, we check in up north with the Myrtle Hawks. Thursday, tour stopped makes the trip to Baldwin to visit with the Bearcats. And Friday, we urge it up with East Union for stop number 12. Then next weekend, Saturday, featuring Mantachi. And Sunday with the Bruce Trojans and the Schooner River rival Calhoun City Wildcats kicking off the second week of July. One note on Water Valley after that, but if you have missed any of the previous stops, go over to our website, WCBI.com. That's it for sports. I'll ask you for your forecast next. 87 degrees right now in Vernon to your northeast. We do have a few isolated showers over there in West Alabama. Also a few isolated showers and storms in the Delta. We would love to see some rain around here to cool things down. Oppressive humidity. I don't know what's worse, Joey, the heat or the humidity. And if you get <laughs> one of these storms, it's even more humid for a little bit. It is. It is. That's why I was going to say, do you really want the rain? Because the humidity <laughs> kind of sticks around. Just stay inside. Just How there you that? go. Can't beat some good old AC, <laughs> right? There you go. We're spoiled by it. All right. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Have a good night.